Hello and welcome back to the studio here in Northumberland. It's been a while actually, and that's because things have started opening up again here in the UK and I've been on the road for the past two weeks doing other parts of my job such as my publishers and the painting holiday. I've been everywhere. I haven't really got a photograph to show you uh, of the intended target um, because I'm actually painting from one of my own paintings, a photograph of one of my own paintings. And this is a place that I painted last year on location. Um, you can kind of see that, I suppose. That's the painting. But I shall be changing that a little bit as well. So, on with the drawing. You'll notice I've only taped the top and the bottom of the paper. That's because I'm going to do the drawing and come across as far as I want either side and then tape off the sides. But I'm starting off with the cottage here. And I'm pressing on fairly hard with the pencil again so that you can see it. That line's going downward slightly. And this is the end of the cottage. And this place is, um, well, it was a painting holiday I did last year. A place called Hackness Grange, which is near Scarborough in North Yorkshire. Here in the UK, of course. That's wrong, that's better. Yeah. And it's a lovely place. Hackness Grange is where we had the painting holiday. That's a, a dormer roof coming out on the top there. And this is the end of the cottage, like so. A few squiggly lines there. I've got a window in this end. These little cottages, they're single storey, and most of them have had their roofs, the top bit, made into a second floor, so they've got dormer windows on. This is the roof going downwards here, slightly fainter on that. Now I'm going to stick two chimneys on there as well. Notice these chimneys, each one is getting progressively lower as they go further away from you. Another one on the end there. And then the roof comes down. And there's a gap in there. And the other bit comes down there. Quite complex at the back, this actually. Once you've got the drawing done on something like this, the painting bit is the easy bit because you've got all your lines which you just have to then fill in. Slight bow in that roof, because they're very old buildings. And a wobbly bit there. <laughs> a wobbly bit, that's a technical term for you. And here's an old shed. Old 
shed, it's an outbuilding. A couple of chimneys on here, chimney pots. We'll have two on that one. And we'll have two on that one. And now I've got a hedge coming in from here. Which goes just past, sorry, just past <laughs> the end of the building. Grasses here, sorry, grasses. This is for people that are not from the north. <laughs> Going past the end of there like that. And then the path. Now what I've got is a lot of trees. slightly upwards as I'm coming out of the painting. And there's the other side of the road, grass underneath that hedge. And then the road comes out here. And on here, I've got a bigger bush there. And then middle distance trees further away. Now in the original, I've got some hills behind. See those? I'm not going to make them as big as that. A little bit there. And coming out like so. Now, that's my drawing finished. I've come across as far as I want to come across. So now I'm just going to tape off and we're ready for paint. Okay, on with the sky wash. And I'm using my one and a half inch flat wash brush for this. Again, Aquafine brushes. I always use the same. I use them for both my watercolors and, and my acrylics. Aquafine, Dale around the Aquafine, beautiful brushes. And very inexpensive brushes, as you well know. Plenty of water here. I'm not faffing about too much with this sky. Very simple sky. And remember at this stage, you can't put too much water on really. You can put too little on. But you can't put too much on. Give yourself the time to be able to move the sky around. And I've got just opening blue here. Plenty of water into that. Look, look loads of water there. Right there on the top. Bring it down. In posh circles, that's known as a graduated wash. Look, it's getting weaker as it comes further down. It's known as a graduated wash. What it means is it gets weaker as it comes further down. <laughs> and again, mop up. Now for my clouds, I'm just letting that run for a second or two. For my clouds, just wash the brush out, squeeze it out, and take some clouds out. Easy as that. Again, we'll have some more out on this side here. This side here. Again, mop up. Keeping control of the water all the time. Just letting that run for a second or two. And then reinstate the top of the cloud. How simple is that? Trust me, I'm an artist. Well, as my mother always used to say, never trust an artist. <laughs> when I was in my 60s, she was still saying, you're going to get a proper job. 
take a little bit out there now and we're just going to put a tiny touch of light red into that ultramarine blue we'll just drop a bit in there look like that don't be scared of this plenty of water into the mix so that's light red and blue mixed now what i'm going to do is soften up just bring it up where i've put that in like that not like that just like that got a bit of cloud shadow then And again, wash out, squeeze out, mop up. And there we go, a very simple sky. Just let that dry, give it about five minutes. Okay, the sky's all lovely and dry now. And so I'm gonna start off with that bit of distant hill over there. And this needs to be really weak. So I'm using again, the ultramarine blue with a touch of light red. The same as I've used in the, in the clouds there but a little bit more light red into it. And keep this nice and weak, like so. And this is the three quarter inch flat brush I'm using now. Again, Aquafine. Coming down, in between there, a little bit over here. And now I'm just going to wash my brush out, squeeze it out between my fingers. Take a little bit out here with my little bit of light. Very, very simple. Don't, don't fiddle about with that. Remember, in the distance, you don't need detail. The further away it goes, the less detail you need. Otherwise, you bring it too far forward. I'll do for that. Now, to my round brush, and I'm going to do the cottage to start with, because obviously, all this is still wet, so I don't want to have all this bleeding into it. So I'm gonna move across to the cottage. And here, good news, we have sand back in, back in stock. The sand's been out of stock for about nine, 10 months. And now, Charles and sand, we have it back in stock. Yay! Now, with these tubes, they are packed to the top. So what I would say, when you first open it, it's got a little thing there. When you first open it, get your palette ready and open it over your palette. We'll just move across here, Gail. Open it across your palette. So I'm just going to pierce that. That's where I'm squeezing my sand. And there we go. And now put the lid back on. This sounds very obvious, but these are nice little lids. So once I've got the lid back on, I've now got a flip top to it. Look. Yeah. Yay! Cute. Charles Evans Sand. I've sorely missed that colour. Now, to my round brush, and I'm going to pre wet the cottage to start with, just with clean water, number eight round brush, again, Aquafine. And I'm going to drop quite a few colours into here. And it's going to look a little bit messy to start with, but it'll be right in the end. Now, just sand. There we go, plenty of water into that. Pop that on. This is such a useful colour. I can't tell you how much I've missed it. And that. And some down here. In this, I'm going to have the light coming from the right. So these bits that I'm painting now are going to be darker eventually. A little bit in the chimneys. Now, while it's all still good and wet, I'm getting a little bit of yellow ochre. Yellow ochre's back in stock as well. Dale around here haven't had this for quite quite a few months. Now we've just got it all back in now. The paints, of course, Aquafine paints. I'm just dropping yellow ochre into there. 
and a little bit in there, and a bit in there. Now, a little bit of light red. Get a few colours going on. Not too much light red. Drop that on there. Oops, more than that. There. Drop that on there as well. Let the colours run and merge together. Just mop up. And now, a touch of blue, ultramarine blue, because that's the blue of the sky. Drop that on. And now it looks like a building with chicken pox. It'll be right. Now, on this darker side, a little bit of raw umber. Put that on there. This will be even darker once we've got the shadow on. And a little bit of that up here. On that left hand side of the chimneys. With the tip of the round brush. Look. A little bit of blue into that side as well. Now, with a clean damp brush, all I'm going to do is stroke the colours together. And that's giving me a lovely stone colour made on the paper. There's no way you're going to make that colour in your palette. So just pre-wet and let it make itself on the paper. And the same over here. As I said, eventually there's going to be shadow in all this as well, so it should be darkening even more. But this is the base colour for my stone. I'll put that. And all I'm doing now, look, as I'm stroking in and merging the colours more, I'm picking up all of those colours on my brush. So now I'll just paint that bit in there. And a little bit more raw umber for in that gap at the back. Now, what I've got here, a little bit of sand again, and I'm not pre-wetting the outbuildings. Just going straight in with very wet sand. And a little bit of raw umber into that. Leave that to dry for the time being. Now just roll umber to that side. And this building's a different colour. It's an old tin building, rusty. So I've got raw umber again. This time, touch of burnt sienna onto it. Plenty of water. We'll have that on there. Now, once I've got that on, just with the same brush full of paint, I'm not putting any more paint onto it. All I'm going to do is dip in to get more water into it. But it's much lighter on that side, look. See? The roof is the same colour on that as well. will make more sense of it afterwards when we put the shadows in. Now that's dried sufficiently to do the roof now. So burnt sienna and raw umber again, but this time more burnt sienna into it. And just filling in. Keep 
carefully up to where it makes the stone work. And fill in there. And remember a few bits of white paper left showing through here and there doesn't hurt. A little bit of extra light in, in a bit on that. Slightly lighter on that side. And again, raw umber and burnt sienna. A bit more raw umber into the mix. For the shed here. As I come down now, look. Start and leave a few bits of white paper showing through here. Just a few. A few strips, but notice how they're coming down diagonally, those bits that I've left. Leave that again. Now, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna mixed. Fairly dark as well, this one. Quite a bit of burnt sienna there. And this is for the windows. And all I'm doing, look. Don't start painting window frames and neck curtains behind them. Just in there are four little blobs, but even a little bit of white paper showing through in between each blob. It's all very technical two in there and in that one and we'll have four in this one the white bit you leave in between each blob is the important bit because that makes it into a window back to the stonework now and raw umber and burnt sienna mix again but quite a lot of water into there. For the stonework, give the impression of stonework. Don't start painting thousands of stones. Less is best. Intimate stonework. Window ledge there. A few bits up there. And a few bits in here. Again, a window ledge. Now I'm going to leave that for a bit, just let it all settle before I go into that with a little bit of detail in the roof and the shadows to finish it off. So to this middle distance bunch of trees here. And again, still with my number eight round brush. Bit of yellow ochre to start with. I love that word, yellow ochre. I got it back. Yay! Yellow ochre there. Now, hooker's green and burnt sienna, but not too much burnt sienna. There. And that is too much burnt sienna. More green, that's better. Plenty of water into it. Whilst that lot's still wet, drop it in. Leaving bits of the yellow ochre showing through here and there. All very simple, but can you see what, I'm talking, what I was talking about earlier? Once you've got the drawing done, in something like this. The painting is the easy bit because you're just filling in all your pencil lines. Filling in block by block. Tapping, dabbling, I'm dabbling. Now to give those a bit more shape very simple. A little bit of blue. Again, ultramarine blue, because that's the blue of my sky. Don't change the blue throughout a picture. Not for anything natural. Blue there. Remember I kept saying the light is coming from the right here. I'll have this down the left of some of these clumps. 
grips there. And at the base. Now with a clean damp brush, stipple on and soften them up a little bit. And that's the distant stuff done. Now I can go back to the cottage. And for this, I'm going to use, actually to start with, I'm going to use Ultimate Blue and Burnt Sienna. Very dark there. Don't want too much water into it either. And all I'm doing for the roof of the, the cottage itself, look, a few touches there. And then a few broken get the help if I've got some paint on my brush. A few broken lines coming in here. Intimate roof tiling. Don't paint roof tiles. This is just a few lines. I'm leaving plenty of gaps in between them as well. Now, coming downwards here. Being careful not to fill in the white bits that are left because dark and light, all these little bits make the difference. And the same one here. But this, the whole building, is made of corrugated, corrugated tin, corrugated iron. I don't know, I'm not a builder. But it's broken lines. There. Now for the shadow. Ultramine blue, again, because that's the blue of my sky. Touch of alizarin crimson. So I've made a really naff purple. Naff, that's not another technical term. A bit in there. A bit more blue. It's like a dark aubergine colour. What I'm going to start with is in the windows there, look. Light coming from the right, so top, and down the right hand side. And you see how that recesses the window into the building. Same one here. Now, where the roof meets the building, we'll have a nice dark line here. There. And there. Actually, I nearly forgot that. Now, more water into the brush and soften that line downwards. Look. Like that. Not like that, just like that. And again there. And now you can see you've got a clear light and a dark side, but that bit there would cast a shadow in there. Like so. Diagonal line coming down. Now, with this corrugated roof here, the shadow, push it upwards, look, with the tip of the brush. Soften it down at the bottom. There. Now that building would cast a bit of a shadow on that one. Diagonal. There. Now that building would cast shadow on there. That's a bit dark actually.
Now, a little bit of a shadow underneath that little roof. And give the whole thing a little bit of age. A few dabs. <gasps> Scary! Be right. Wash out, squeeze out. Where I've just done those daubs, soften. Now for the bigger bushy bits, bigger bushy bits, you know what I mean. Starting off again with the yellow ochre, but everything stronger than it was there. Tapping on with my number eight round again. I'll smell that over here as well. And it's these trees as well, behind, that really make the cottage stand out. Now, actually, a bit on that as well. And that, coming down there. Now, hooker's green and burnt sienna again, but again, stronger than I use it in the middle distance. Is green, plenty of burnt sienna. And pop that on there. Dabbing it on and leaving bits of the yellow ochre showing through here and there. Carefully around the chimneys. Carefully around the building. dabbing rather than painting solidly. That way I get a jagged edge to the edges of the trees rather than sharp edged. And also look, I'm leaving bits of white paper showing through and bits of yellow ochre where I've got the yellow ochre. I mean, I could paint through that and, and suck the paint out afterwards, but they're easy enough to miss. And more of the same over here. Again, carefully around my dormer window. You notice now how this darker green takes over from that. Around the hedge. And more of the same over here. Keep too quiet because I don't like it to look like you're watching paint dry. That's why I'm talking all the time. Like that. And a bit down the bottom. 
Now just like before, blue, just opening blue. And I'll pop that in at its strongest, where the trees meet the building. And at the minute, it all looks a bit hard edged where that blue comes in, but it will be right. Bit more blue for over here. And spreading out a little bit. And we'll have some more of that blue down here as well. Again, where the trees meet the building. Now what I'm going to do, with a clean damp brush, spread that blue upwards into the trees a little bit. Just a clean damp brush look. And again, spread that. Now, I've changed to my three quarter inch brush now to do the hedges. I'm starting off again with yellow ochre, but a different green this time as well. Bit of yellow ochre, and I'm just, actually I want it stronger than that. I'm just popping in there like so, on the top bits. And there, on that light side there. This time, hooker's green and yellow ochre. Remember, for the trees, uh, I used hooker's green and burnt sienna. Hooker's green and yellow ochre, and plenty of yellow ochre into that look. Pop that in there as well. You don't need, when you're painting a hedge, you don't need to paint individual privet leaves. <laughs> Big brush, give the impression of it. Leaving a bit of the light on the top, hence the yellow ochre. Like that. And now a few tiny just a light red here and there. Plenty of water into it. Yeah. And again, wash out, squeeze out. Soften that. Spreading it around a little bit. There. Over here, a little bit weaker. Again, yellow open. Off the top. Now, more water into the hooker's green and yellow ochre, so that's we weaker as well. But that, and again, a little bit of light red. Just a few touches. By the way, you notice how many greens I've got going on in this picture already? By just using one green, hooker's green, but mixing it with every other colour. Lots of different greens going on. 
Now, just in that bit there, where it turns, I'm going to have a little bit of blue. Ultramarine blue, plenty of water into it. That up. Like so. Then wash out, squeeze out, soften that. Head just done. Easy as that. That big tree over there. I'll have a slightly different colour to that as well. But I'm going to start off again with yellow ochre. Plenty of water. Down here as well. This time, hooker's green and light red. There's my hooker's green. Bring light red into it. That's a lovely old fashioned green. Old fashioned watercolour green. I know what I mean by that old fashioned. It does, it's an old fashioned type green. Again, that takes over from the other greens. And again, leaving a few gaps in it all. Think of the poor old birds. If you fill it all in, the birds will break the necks if they try and fly through that lot. where that light yellow ochre comes in on the top and verge. And again, just like on the other trees, I'm going to have a little bit of blue into this, ultramarine blue, because again, the, 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 the blue gives it some shape as well. And I'll put that blue at the base as it goes behind the hedge. And then coming up the left hand side of it. Soften, my, clean, clean my brush and soften the blue in a little bit. Clean that brush. Now I just need to let that dry a little bit before I start the foreground. Now, for the foreground, I'm gonna paint the track, the road, in first before I do the grasses either side, sorry, the grasses either side. You can imagine if I, if I painted the grass in first, I've then got to very carefully paint the path in so that I don't touch the grass there. Um, so it's better to whack the part in first, then you can flick the grasses up in front of it. Does that make sense? It does to me. Gail's nodding, so I know it must make sense. Now, ultramarine blue, because that's the blue of my sky, and light red, and lots of water into this, and I mean a lot of water. And while I'm doing it, stroke over. Like so. Leave a little bit of white paper sparkling through. A bit more water into the brush and take that off around the corner there. Now working fairly quickly, because while that's still wet, I now want to get a little bit of light red on its own. When I say on its own, plenty of water into it, but no blue. And just a, few, a couple of strokes here and there. Wash out, squeeze out, and soften those curls together a little bit there. there. 
Now, if I leave that to dry just for a couple of minutes, then I can do the grasses in either side. Again, with my three quarter inch brush, time for the grasses. Just yellow ochre, plenty of water in it to start with. Whack a bit of that down here. Whack, another technical term there for you. And we'll have a bit of that over here as well. Now, ochre's green and yellow ochre mixed. A lot of yellow ochre into the green. There's the green. There, look. Even more. There. That's a good grassy colour. Look at that. Leaving the yellow ochre showing on the top loop. Bring that across here. Took it round the edge. But leaving bits of yellow ochre showing through as well. Now, I'm going to strengthen that ever so slightly, a little bit less water into it. And start and flick up here and there. A little bit of rough on top. It's nice to have a bit of rough on top. Look up there. <laughs> nice to have a bit of rough on top. Listen to me. I don't like that bit there, got to be said. So, I'm going to wash it out. People say, oh God, look at that, I hate it, I've ruined the picture. No, you haven't, just wash it out. There you go. And again, go back into it. Now, I've got to let that dry solidly, so I'm going to give it five minutes before I put the final shadows in, coming over from this side here. Easy peasy. Now it's final strokes and it's back to the shadow colour. Remember that? The blue of the sky. In this case, ultramarine blue. Alizarin crimson. Make the naff purple. Tone it back with burnt sienna. Bit more blue into that. And there we go. There's my shadow colour. I want plenty of water into that. What I'm going to start with. Remember... Shadow, as it goes further back into the landscape, gets weaker like every other colour. I don't have it all the same strength. This tree here, I'm going to cast a shadow from that. It's going to come across the grass, grass, and then across the path. Across the grass and across the path, like so. On that. And a bit there. Soften out a little bit here and there. That hedge there is going to have a bit of shadow onto the grass beneath it. Like so. Clean down brush, push that up a little bit. Look. Imagine something out of shot. So you've got a tree over here, for instance, that you can't see. Always very good in the landscape because it leaves the eye into the picture. Bring that down across the grass, like so. Leaving some of the under undercolour shining through. I'll just flick up with shadow colour as well. Because that grass is now in shadow. Now bring that across onto the rogue. Leaving the undercolour showing through. 
So you're getting more of a dappled shadow. And bring that across even more. Shall we have another tree there, out of shot? I think we will. Again, bring it down. One to the links. And then across the road. take the tape off and show you a finished picture. And there we are, a finished painting. Quite a serene little scene, that one, if I say so myself. Um, as I said, that added originally last year, at a place called Hackness Grange, and that's just outside the gates of the, of the hall, the hall, the Grange, where I was staying. Lovely place, lovely area. It's near Scarborough in North Yorkshire, so if you're ever in the area, visit Hackness, it's a beautiful little village. The colours I've used for that, as ever, the Aquafine paints. Here we go. There's the Aquafine. There's just a few of what I've used. Oops, me and blue there. And the sand. Yay! I, I can't say how happy I am about that being back in stock. But you can see how useful that colour is. It's not just for painting stonework. And it's not just for painting beaches, even though it's called sand. It's a good lightener as well. Put it into any colour you've got, one at a time, and it'll lighten all those colours, much better than using white. So, very, very useful colour. The brushes I've just used as well, again, Aquafine. The, three, the one and a half inch flat brush, the three quarter inch flat brush, and as you can tell, I use these for my acrylics as well. Number eight round brush, and the number four rear. Even the biggest one of those brushes was only 10 quid, is it? 10 pounds. How much is the three quarter? Oh, God. I think that's four pound 50 or something. And that's oh. two pound 50. They're for nothing, these brushes. They're fabulous. I should know these. I kind of know them. <laughs> and the paper I've used, Langton Rough. And these come in two sizes that we, we stock on the website. Langton Rough, a beautiful paper. And you can see, you get just the right texture to it, for a landscape especially. And you can paint on the other side if it goes wrong, because both sides are sized. Lovely. And the books, there's a couple of books here with watercolours. This one, the first book I ever did, a hundred years ago, full of tips and techniques. I'm talking about watercolours now. I have so many books out, but these are such useful books, especially if you're just starting out on watercolours. And the Charles Evans Pocket Book for Watercolour Artists, I keep mentioning this with this one because it is just so popular and full of tips and techniques on so many things. Lots of people count this as their Bible for keeping in their paint box. So there we go. Hope you've enjoyed this. Everything I use is on the website, charlesevansart.com. If you're on Twitter, then have a look on Twitter because every painting I do in my studio here or out on location, I put stage by stage on Twitter as well. So follow me on there and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.